I'm going to try and refrain from talking too much in this episode because this morning I've woken up with the almighty cold of colds and I have another job to do on this car. We are on the downward slope towards getting this car finished. Um, I'll just show you one thing I've done off camera since the last episode uh, regarding the exhaust system. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Isn't that nice? Yes, I know, I've painted the bolts. It doesn't look very professional, I know. You're not gonna see any of them. I mean, you're gonna see these. I might have to uh, take the paint off. Well, to be fair, I'm gonna uh, put the heat shield back on in this episode anyway. Uh, but uh, I think we can honestly say that looks like the bee's knees. I just love it. The, the paintwork just gives off the, uh, the design of that uh, downpipe. I absolutely love it, right? It just curls underneath the sump there and honestly what what more can you ask for so uh, i'm really pleased with that and everything can now uh, go back on in terms of cooling system so we've got a painted i use i painted the thermostat housing as well now there's something i'm going to do this gasket isn't in great condition but i'm going to put some uh high lamar which has disappeared it's somewhere in there um, and I'm going to put some high Lamar on to mate it to this block. I have cleaned this block as thoroughly as possible. Um, so that's all good. And these bolts are just waiting for everything to go back in the three 10 mil bolts. Um, so that's going to go back in today along with the hoses. And I've got the radiator fan, which are still inside the house. Um, but uh, we've got a couple of bits and clips there that I've, uh, I've got to uh, sort of arrange. This coolant bottle has been cleaned. Oh, before I, I speak... I'm going to take a gamble here. That spring, I can't get it in. The, the retainer spring for this um, thermostat. I know there's a reason for it being there, but I think this is so tight, I cannot see this thermostat getting pushed out and basically moving about inside this housing here, this, this passageway. I can't see that happening. So I'm going to take a risk, but if I think there's any problems, I'm afraid I will have to take this back out. And, well, we'll see. I've ordered... 10 litres of coolant anyway so I've got plenty left and then the coolant bottle well I've tried degreaser bicarbonate and I tell you what it's pretty good there's only that bit there that I'm not happy with on the side but there was a lot of that at the bottom and it's cleaned up really really nicely so you know there are a few tips to try and clean up a bottle there's no cracks in that it's high quality plastic so I was happy to do that uh, and all those hoses, check out, they're all absolutely fine. There's no cracks. They're so high quality, it's untrue. Motorcraft, brilliant, brilliant brand. So uh, let's get cracking. Um, as I say, I'm not going to talk much because I'm really struggling with my nose today. So a silent movie.
don't worry too much about torque settings just nip them up as usual some of that hylomar might be coming out that's good there we go all coming together like Lego pop that on temporary might have to move this again oh come on oh he doesn't want to go on there we go just for now and this can go on here oh I need the hose Some of these are really rusty. I might have to get the seven mil on this. You can get a seven mil on these, by the way. Uh, in fact, I think that's what I'm gonna do in a second. <sighs> right, at least that's rooted in. Lovely. Right, so I've got this loom here. And I'll pop that back on. I just took that off to paint this. Didn't want to be painting the plug. Come on. Lovely. And this, we've got to bridge this. Mm. I've got to bridge that when I do the tuning. <sighs> Can't remember which way this goes now. There we go. Lovely. Okay, just put that there. That seems good. Lovely. Taking a look at the this hose. Yeah, we got um got some indentations of where the Jubilee clip has once sat. This is half the cause of hoses failing, but there doesn't look to, looks like the other side is reinforced. That's really good quality rubber that is. Oh, this is definitely the side that uh, it's got a bit more dirt. I couldn't get that out. Uh, as you can see with this corrosion here. Oh, come on. Top tip, make sure that your hose clamps are in the correct position, an easy position to undo if you need to undo them. So that's all in a nice position. And just See, what you're going to have to do is hold with one hand and tighten with another because what will happen is when it tightens it will push round uh, and you don't want it you want you would you really don't want it being in that sort of position when you want to undo the damn thing I just love Jubilee clamps they're much better than the spring ones I just love them absolutely love them I had this idea of converting my focus mark one uh, from spring clips to Jubilee clips um, and I'm, I still consider doing that actually because they're such a pain. Lovely. Okay, and I'll uh, just leave that on there so it doesn't get lost. Perfect. Right, this one. Okay, we've got a couple of places to go. So. Jubilee on there. It's gonna be a tight fit. Come on. God, I bet this is one expensive hose. It's such a huge hose. And it just clips in there. Come on. There we go. Okay, and then that plugs in to there at the back by the dipstick. I'll just leave that for a second. Okay, so just Get that tightened and obviously that goes into the radiator. Lovely. I think that's all. Yeah, that's tight. Yeah, that's tight. Lovely. Oh. That's nice and tight. Okay. 
that's nice and tight. Right, I'll clean that dipstick, it's an absolute pain in the ass. Okay, so we seem to be clear. I can't remember what that's for. Oh, it's one of the cables. Have you ever worked on your car when you feel like a bag of <laughs> Um, Do forgive my lack of enthusiasm, guys. It's going together so nicely, I just can't express it because of how crap I feel. Uh, some people say, why are you filming when you feel crap? Well, there's a job to be done. At the end of the day, I don't delay jobs just because I need to feel good for YouTube, you know. I'm sure we've all been there and done this, and it's just one of them days you've got to get on with it, have a cup of tea, which I've now finished again. I need to have another one, hot drinks and all that. Um, brilliant. Right. Uh, we seem to be all plumbed in now. Um, there is another clip somewhere. Oh, is that? Yeah, there's... What, where's that come from? Why, why have I got another hose clamp? Ah, it's for there. That's why. I need to put that on there to remind myself. Okay, I'll do that in a second. Um, I can't remember what, what this is for. Where it goes. Might be for there. I've got a feeling it could be. It looks like something's been halted. Ah, yeah, I can see something. So that goes on there, I presume. So I might need to. It's one of these that you can. Ah, you can twist it. There you go. So it is. It's it's one of these then, because I can't see any other area where it would be required. No. Okie dokie. All right. I suppose we ready to get the radiator and the electric fan. Ooh, presto. They've just arrived. Perfect. Right, I've just taken these two top bolts back out. Uh, the one goes here. This is for the electric fan. Now the radiator sits, I don't know why, I can't remember what that's for, um, but the radiator will sit in these two slots. So we just need to make sure that just bits like the transmission cooler and any wiring is just temporary pushed out the way. I don't want anything snagging. Ideally, I should have moved that pipe, but uh, I'm just going to move that, and uh, that shouldn't be in the way at all. So let's uh, let's do this one-handed as usual. Oh, it's had a bit of a respray. This thing. Oh, I forgot to go over the corners. But uh, no, the radiator is in really good condition. Uh, so it's had a bit of a sort of satin black, nothing high temperature based, uh, nothing excessive just something to make it look a little bit better so that just that shifted nicely in there just it's a good job i've got this viewing panel from the front because there's no grill in my way um i might need to just shift it backwards and forwards I don't know which way we're going um, but uh, ideally we can now uh, pop in some of the uh, the fasteners yes so uh, pop one in as long as it lines up it doesn't matter just make sure it goes through there we go so uh, just make sure that they are going in yeah that's not coming out Oh, this one's going in quite nicely. Uh, must be that one that's a bit rusty. Oh my God, it's gone all the other way. How easy is this? Ford Focus Mark 1 enthusiasts will be suffering with the fact that we have to drop our radiators out the bottom. This cross member is detachable. It's like a thin piece of metal. You have to drop the cross member and then the radiator pack comes out. I say the pack because you've got to hang the air con condenser or the automatic transmission cooler and the power steering rack. Whichever one you have, you've got to hang them up and then detach the radiator. Unless you're taking that off as well. I think putting the radiator back in makes it feel like an engine bay. Look at that. Compare that with how it looked before, guys. If you go back to some of my earliest episodes a couple of months ago. So, oh, yes. Oh, come on. What needs to be pretty tight, just snug. 
again. In my lesson is with torque settings. You don't need most of the torque settings. But you just need to make things nice and snug. Just put that back up there. Oh, this is going to be a pain. Uh, and what I'm going to have to do, where is that? Uh, I don't know where it's gone. Where's that hose clamp gone? I seem to have lost a hose clamp. I can't remember where that's gone. It might have dropped on the floor and I can't be asked to see it at the moment. Um, what I would recommend doing, because if you've got a CTX, don't put this pipe in. Put these in first. Uh, the transmission cooler pipes. Come on, can't even get them off. So, bottom one. It, they're basically bent into position. Uh, and I have made sure, I've had this radiator because I because I back flushed this radiator, there might have been water that had got into here. You don't want water in this cooler. So what I did is I put this radiator next to my dehumidifier in my flat and it sucked quite a bit of water, which would have been remaining in the radiator. So this will be dry as well. So you know that uh, there's no water contamination. These are going nicely back into place. Come on, I'm trying to get it. You've got to get the union nice and square. There we go. And once you've done that, you just get the flare spanner, 13 millimeters, and tighten the connections. If I can get it on, that's it. Come on, we need it the other way. snug not over tighten again there's a some sort of torque setting for these but because i'm doing it with a spanner it's not possible there you go that's snug lovely we are back into place there now i'll find the hose clamp for that in a second i'll just go to the ones over here expansion vessel come on This is tight. I think I've done that too much. I can't. Come on. Oh, that was a bit of a struggle. Oh, well, I'll take that off as well. Just make sure. Yeah, it's just make sure it's flush. With the end, and again, I've over tightened this again. Can't get it over the bloody loop. There we go. It's got a bit slack now. Oh, come on! It's pretty damn tight. There we go. Lovely. Nice. Just do that up again, just a little bit. There we go. Just a little, little bit more. And that's that's just double check that that is tight. Yeah, that's tight. That's tight enough. Brilliant. We've, we've made sure the connections are tight. Where's that going now? Where is it? Ah, right. Found it. Now this is the probably the most rustiest one of the lot. Um, so I've got a six mil. It's a six mil, not a seven. Stupid Andrew. So just gonna lop it on. Force it on. Remember that that um, hose is supposed to stop against this bump here. That's exactly where it's supposed to go. Okay, and then we can just tighten that up with the six.
the only way of telling if a Jubilee clip has had its day, and these are Ford ones, these are really high quality, is if it actually, the thread gives up and you just, basically the thread has just destroyed itself and it will never, basically that's now got to the point where it's got stiff. If it doesn't go stiff and it still goes loose and it just keeps spinning, the thread's knackered. And that's when you change a Jubilee clip. And these are clearly stainless ones, they don't rust. The only bits that rust are these stupid nuts. Lovely. And the last thing we have uh, is this fan. I haven't painted on the inside, but I've done the uh, the outside with the fan. I thought that'd be a good touch. Okay, so the fan, it's got two slits. They go down there. Just be careful, don't want to scratch anything. Just line it up. Might take a bit of shift up, there we go, good. You'll feel it going, perfect. Right, now we've got a bush with a collar that goes on the inside, okay. And then if I just hold that, we've got the outer bush that goes on that. And then that, there you go. How easy is that? There we go, done. Lovely. I just Lovely. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, the only thing I've just noticed is I put the bloody fan connector on because I had to take this fan off to paint it. Oh, you silly boy, Andrew. You put it on the wrong damn way. I suppose I'm going to have to release this now and then spin it round. Oh well, I'll do that at some point. Because uh, that connector needs to be over here. Yeah. Oh dear. Anyway, I'll sort that out in a second. But that's the reason why you get all this wiring sorted. As I say, it's all nice and organised. That's why I wanted to have the, the wiring sorted down there. But look at that. That just looks absolutely amazing. I'm going to do a bunch of cleaning in a second. But before then... We're gonna get the heat shield on. Now I believe, <laughs> if I remember, yeah, I think these are 10, these are 10s. Yeah, they are 10s. Uh, I'm gonna to have to clean these up because the threads are gonna have paint on them. We don't want anything snapping. Well, I've just spent the last 20 minutes white spirit on all the hoses, just a little bit of thinner, just to clean any excess. Look, we can all see the parts numbers very, very clearly. That was certainly not very exposed. Look at that. That's what you get for uh, using a bit of cleaner on your hoses. These hoses look almost brand new. Even the, the breather hose here was just, what the hell? That has literally come out of nowhere. The amount of dirt on your hoses and you don't realize it, it's because if they don't have a sheen like this, they're dirty. So it's always nice to just give them a bit of a scrubble and a bit of GT85 just to put a bit of silicon back into the hoses because obviously with uh, spirits or paint thinners, you dry them out and it's not good. Do not use petrol. Please don't use petrol, okay? Petrol is here. I've been using this to clean all the bolts. That's it. Uh, now we've got the fan in. I've just given this a bit of a clean and I've rotated the blooming fan again. I've now screwed it back in and now we can put the fan switch back in oh how does this go how does this go completely forgotten uh forgot the orientation now usually it goes back in uh, yeah we, there we go there's your here's your tag there we go done and that wiring just goes neatly through there i might just sort of cable tie some of this together but it's all looking very well rooted. I can see everything instead of it being covered in grease. Uh, and I've literally just gone over every area now. Uh, I'm really, really pleased with how this is looking. It's looking like a proper car. I think the last piece for this episode is this. Oh yes, 
beautiful it's come up so well i haven't done the back side obviously because you don't see it obviously don't waste paint come on guys i'm not like that uh now we just line it up roughly now we've got the bolt holes there and just place it on like that and uh we just get one of the screws in oh it's gonna rain luckily i'm stopping this episode and uh, just gently just thread it in are you going to thread in today yep we have just about caught and be very careful with these um in fact i might actually strange enough i've just thought about copperies i can't be bothered to get the copperies but I might actually consider the copperies with those two bolts. Um, I'm going to tighten them up now, but I'll come back to them and probably put copperies on them. But they've come out. When a bolt has been removed and put back in, it'll be far easier to remove it again. Look how good that is. Oh, my goodness me. That really smacks in your face, doesn't it? I didn't realise the impact of that. You guys have not seen the rocker cover yet. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, need to get my 10 mil. Always use a short socket when you might need a bit more pushing power on the bolt because uh, deep sockets are fine if you need a deep socket but if you can get away with a short one, use a short one. I think I've been guilty of overusing my deep sockets when actually it's not required. There's a time and a place. There we go. Snug, but not over tight. Is that snug? Okay, good. Is that snug? Yeah. There we go. Don't over tighten it. Lovely! Right. And it has just started to rain. That's me done for today, guys. You can see the transformation. I'm feeling rubbish, but the car is getting better. Uh, and I'm going to leave you with that uh, contrast today. Um, it's certainly looking better. So uh, I think that's a good way of ending this episode because we put everything back on and we put that back on. So next episode is going to be distributor, coil pack, ignition, fuel, etc. Anyway, you take care, guys. I shall see you very soon.